Will I hit peace? We're going to discuss Iceland's latter day saga. Tiny Iceland has again bid fair to regain its former place in the machineries of Western mythopoiesis, this time as an icon and at least a prospective model of how in the current revolutionary narrative a people can arise in unity and peacefully overthrow their corrupt, powerful overlords, rein in predatory international capital, relieve extortionate debts, jail financial and governmental malefactors and then go on to live happily ever after in the middle of the cold dark ocean atop a seething sump of volcanic activity. At least once a day some version of this fabulous tale crops up on Facebook usually accompanied by some scolding commentary pleading that if Iceland can do it so can we. Codswallop. Every time I see this new saga it's an, Iceland, it's an Icelandic word, you know. Uh, how brave, doughty, determined little Iceland canceled its debt throughout the bankers and started over, always awash in noble, outraged, hortatory sentiments declaring that this should be our model. I want to grab somebody and I want to take them by the collar and I want to shout. Listen, please! What do you mean? There is not the faintest scintilla of similarity between Iceland and any place else on the planet, much less the U.S. of A. Now, I mean, it's sure it's easy to understand why this new Icelandic saga is being appropriated. OWS is more abundant without new ideas, apparently. The duopoly presents us with an mm, equally suicidal electoral choices, and the moneyed rich, they just laugh at us and flip us off. The new Icelandic saga is a kind of an antidote. It provides the basis for what used to be called the propaganda of the cause or internal agit prop. Motivating people into believing the impossible is still possible. Thanks to some creative writing, Iceland has come to be portrayed as the tiny insular David who rose up and struck dead the greedy global Goliath of predatory capital, or at least tamed it. And, and truly, the Icelandic courts did recently send a couple of bankers away for short terms in jail, and one of whom happened to have been the former leader of the ruling party. But uh, being exhorted to take up this banner, it's worth remembering how actually unique Iceland really is. And in the first place, Iceland's total population is only 320,000 people. It's much easier, you must imagine, to place to change things in a place where the population is like one one thousandth of the size of the U.S. of A. There are more people in Bernalillo County, New Mexico, you might ask where, that's where I live, than in the whole country of Iceland. And Iceland, they're basically all related to each other too. They're all cousins, S's, sons, and daughters, D-O-T-T-I-R-S. As a result, Icelandic society is a much more intimately organized society than any with which we are currently familiar. It's like a national small town like Pottersville or Gilligan's Island with pubs and neighboring shopping malls. Also, because there are so few of them and they're almost all related to one another, they want know one another socially and the power of acquaintanceship, the immediacy of possible sanctions against alleged or presumed malefactors is greater and much more direct than it would be and is in larger, more diffuse cultures like ours. Also as befits a homogeneous society, the Icelandic political culture is familial. Its parliament consists of nearly 600 members, which is larger than both the houses of the United States Congress combined. Its parliamentary uh, representation is one represented to 400, I mean 4,400 citizens. By comparison to the U.S., our Congress critters each represent about three quarters of a million people. That's 750,000 to 4,400. The Icelandic parliamentarian can scarcely afford to alienate even one of his constituents. He sees every one of them on the streets all the time. In the U.S., they don't know you. They don't care. 
As for the banking crisis and its resolution, well, you can Google it. It's far more complicated than I can do justice to here, and there's lots of material. In general, Iceland had only one main um, uh, countrywide bank and two smaller regional ones. They were all deeply compromised in the banking and mortgage frauds that brought down the economies of the world in 2007 and 8. Eventually the main bank was nationalized. The other two were placed into receivership and some debts were canceled. Here again the possibility of comparisons though breaks down. One user megabank that is one of the too big to fail BOA or Citigroup it's worth the entire GNP of Iceland yearly many times over and we're up against far more than just three little banks. None of this of course is to diminish the accomplishments. They have done much and they continue to do much in the way of sustaining popular sovereignty. We, we could do it here too with a bit of geographic wizardry. I mean all you'd have to do is break up the 300 million of us into about a thousand little independent nation states. Uh, we can discuss how you think that might work out absent that nice large cold ocean surrounding each one of them when I see you at the beach.